What's up guys, it's your boy Damone and welcome back to another Epic 7 video. As we pull close to the nerfs and big buffs coming, I wanted to finally take the time and answer some questions that you guys might have. I'm going to be teaming up with a bunch of other content creators. A lot of the other content creators across the Epic 7 community are going to be covering uh, their ML4s and 5s to kind of help give you guys perspective so you guys know exactly who to trade for, who not to trade for. Um, and in terms of my part, we're going to be talking about Arbiter Vildred and Judge Kise. So if you guys are looking to kind of trade for, you know, Arbiter or, you know, Judge Kise, or if you guys are looking to maybe trade Arbiter, I'm going to give you guys some pointers and some tips as to what you guys really need to be cognizant of if you guys are looking to trade for either one of those. I'm going to go over builds, strategies, pitfalls that you could get yourself into if you're not prepared. And overall, just help get you guys in a better position. So if you guys do opt to go for these two heroes, specifically Judge and Arbiter, you guys can start off on the right foot. So without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and dive on in. Alright guys, so first up we're looking at Arbiter Vildred. Now when we look at Arbiter Vildred, there's a couple of things that stand out. Obviously as an AoE attack, that when he attacks all enemies, he decreases hit chance. And for those of you guys who don't understand what hit chance is, it just basically increases the enemy's chance to miss. So if they do miss, you receive less damage. Now as you attack with Arbiter Vildred, he's going to generate focus. And when the focus is full, he's going to deal increased damage with the skill 3 and that's when you see all the dragons and stuff come out. Also, the cool thing that makes Arbiter Vildred a really solid farmer, if you guys are lacking a farmer, is that if he kills any enemy at all with his skill 3, the cooldown on his skill 3 is not reset. So, if you guys ever see me farming or making 6 stars, I like to use Arbiter because, you know, I never pulled regular Vildred. So, Arbiter will just go, clear a wave, it'll reset his third as soon as you start the next wave, he'll use his third again. And it's really consistent, it's super nice. But, to be honest, I know you guys are not excited about his skill 3, per se, as much as you guys are probably excited about his skill 2. Now, when we look at his skill 2, after receiving lethal damage, Caster regenerates to 100% health, 100% uh, combat readiness, so he's granted a turn instantly, and then increased attack. But the increased attack, as you guys all know, or if you don't know, is going away when the nerf comes. Not only that, when he dies, it resets his skill cooldown of his skill 3. So, let's say you use the skill 3... You died, you come back to life, then your skill 3 is reset and you can use the skill 3 again. I know that there's a lot of people out there, and I'm just going to go ahead and say this, a lot of people out there, I've been asked a lot if they should trade their Arbiter Vildred. And to be quite frank with you guys, Arbiter Vildred is probably one of the easiest, if not the easiest, ML5s to build in the game. Why? Because he doesn't really take a lot of thought when you put him into a team composition. Because... With his skill 2, if he dies, he's going to get a turn. He's, he's going to use the skill 3. Now, the problem with Arbiter before pre-buff was that his multipliers were really low. So he didn't really deal damage at all, right? So then what they did was they increased the amount of damage that he dealt, right, by like 30% all the way across the board, and they added an attack buff. So now, even though they're taking away the attack buff, it's kind of no big deal because he still deals the increased damage, so he's not losing the increased damage. So, Arbiter can still be a significant cleave, and there are ways that you can offset that if you're running him on an artifact like ML Dreamblade. Because then, if he dodges an attack, let's say you're stacking this with anybody that has a chance to miss, other than himself, of course, anytime somebody misses an attack on him, or he dodges, or whatever, he's going to get a, give himself an attack buff if you're running with ML Dreamblade. So, that's one way that you can offset. Also, with Alexa's Basket being changed, Arbiter can still be a viable tool, mainly because Alexa's Basket now is going to grant greater attack at the start of the turn. Obviously, with a low percent chance, but it's still something that you can make work. So, if you guys are in a position where you're thinking of, well, I want to trade... XYZ ML5 for Arbiter Vildred. The thing you guys got to remember is that he's super, super duper easy to plug into a comp. Now, in terms of stat focus, you really just want to get as much damage on him as possible. And there's a ton of ways to build him. Like, for instance, I have mine on an attack, attack, and crit damage build. But you can also build him on speed. I've seen people build Arbiter Vildred super fast. So you can utilize the skill 1 for the combat readiness reduction on his skill 1. You know, and then so maybe you could cycle his revive faster. I've seen people build them super duper slow with massive damage. 
And then you can build them somewhere in between. You can build them tanky, not tanky, squishy, kind of whatever you want. But Arbiter Vildred, again, is one of the easiest, if not the easiest, five-star hero to build. So if you're positioning him, he's most likely going to be in your team composition for Cleave, period. But just be cognizant that if you're positioning him, you're going to want to make sure that you stack him up with some, some kind of attack buff since he's losing his. So make sure to stack him with an attack buff. If you have anybody on your team that can stack defense break on the enemy team, that can also help you as well. But all in all, my general advice for Arbiter is if you have the choice, I would probably hold on to him. If you're trading for Arbiter, understand that he's just great all around now with the changes to his kit, not like before when he was typically pretty bad. In terms of ideal sets, I mean, you guys can put destruction on him, attack, you can run a speed set on him. You can put him on counter if you wanted to run creative plays. You can even take him up a little bit. Ultimately, it's just going to depend on what kind of goals you have for your box. In terms of ideal artifacts, anything that's going to maximize his damage can work. If you don't have any artifacts, you guys can put him on like Elia's Knife if you wanted to ignore defense. You can put him on Portrait of the Savior if you guys have that. You can put him on ML Dreamblade. RNL, pretty much any type of artifact that helps you maximize the amount of damage that you're going to deal and then of course when alexa's basket comes around with the upgrade you could definitely use that too now on the flip side of that if you guys have arbiter vildred and you guys are absolutely dead set and you guys are asking me like all right d listen d if you had to trade your arbiter vildred today for a hero who would it be and for me personally it'll probably be either fallen cc or dark corvus and the reason why i say fallen cc or dark corvus and again this is this is assuming that we're not getting a new ml like at the start of the month. But assume we're not getting a new ML at the start of the month. The reason why I would go for Dark Four if it's a fall in CC is because now with Crimson Army getting nerfed, damage mitigation is now going to be even more valuable. So Fallen CC herself offers a lot of damage mitigation. She brings the barrier. She has the 100% provoke. And she has a skilled nullifier, which if positioned correctly can be very, very effective. And if I'm going from an offensive to a defensive situation or, or potentially even a defensive and offensive Fallen CC is one of those heroes that really kind of shine to me that, that I feel like could help me in a lot of different ways, especially if I had to lose Arbiter. And then, of course, in Dark Corvus's case, he's just probably the best single target nuker in the game. So when I think about the game overall, I'm thinking about the future as well. So like RTA, you know, real-time arena when that's dropping. And I'm also thinking about usability. So if... Dark Corvus, if I decided to go with a Dark Corvus, I know I can plug Dark Corvus in a lot of different situations, mainly Guild Wars, mainly Arena, like offense for those tough comps, and that's something that I can utilize and plug in right away. So if I had to choose, let's say if I absolutely had to get rid of Arbiter Vildred, those are two choices that I would personally make if I was put into that situation. So now let's get into who you guys are really probably wondering about, and that's my girl, Judge Kisei. I mean, Judge, Judge Kisei. <laughs> Judge Kisei. So Judge Kisei, listen, only wears the finer things in life, all right? She's not wearing no polo, no IZOD, all right? No Target, no Walmart shoppers here. You got to make sure that Judge Kisei gets the best possible gear that you have in your box, period. Now, there's quite a few ways that you can run her, but I, I, need, I just need to say this up front so you guys can just understand this. And I'm saying this as a Judge Kisei user. I use Judge Kisei day in day out through and through this is my bay the thing you got to understand about judge is even though she's great and probably in my opinion right now probably hands down the best cleave in the game there's a lot that goes to that and we're going to talk about all that so if you guys are thinking about trading for judge kisei this is something that you guys really really need to pay attention to so to start this out guys i'm just going to go ahead and say it we're going to address the elephant in the room without the ele without the soul burn here it Judge Kisei is really, really subpar, and I'm going to explain to you guys why. So, on Judge Kisei's third skill, she has a 75% chance to increase cooldown, skill cooldown three times. So, she's going to use her AoE, you know, flap, flap. She's going to swing her scythe a few times. Every time it hits, it has a chance, basically, to increase the enemy's cooldown. So, what that means is if, let's say, you had a four-turn cooldown, but your skill wasn't on cooldown yet, if all three of her hits proc'd, then you would basically have to wait that full four turns, right? Or at least three turns to use your ability. Now, the problem with this third skill in the positioning is that nowadays, everybody's pretty much running immunity, okay? All day, all the time, immunity on all the troublesome units. 
So what happens is, and this is what happened before they actually buffed Judge, was that even though she had a cool kit and the skill reset was awesome, it's just there was no application of it because you couldn't get past the immunity. So even if you build Judge fast, it didn't matter because like people were building Judge fast to kind of counter those cleave defenses. So if you went and that Judge Kise was faster than your cleave team, then Judge would just cleave and then you would just be out of luck, right? But nowadays, everybody's running immunity all over, like I said, so it nullifies that ability. So when we got into the skill two, what they added was that now she dispels the buff, right, from each enemy, and the damage dealt increases proportional to the amount of enemies on the screen. Not only that, now her skill two, when you burn it, it grants an extra turn into the skill three. So now that she had a, has a strip with the extra turn into skill three, and now revalidated this ability and actually made it usable. So when I say to you guys, if you guys are planning to use, use Judge Kise, you are definitely, definitely, definitely going to want to plan around a Taga Hell's book, whether that's going to be an Oxlots into Judge, okay? Or if you guys are just going to build an overall fast team composition and you're just cycling turns, let's say, say you're going for a more tanky Judge, then you're still going to want to kind of position in a way that's going to allow you to, to get the soul burn quickly, if not right away. If not, your fight's going to be a little bit more drawn out because you're going to have to play off of the strip and then potentially into the skill three later. So there's a lot of different ways that you could play this. So for instance, let's say you use Judge more as a support and you wanted to go with the strip here with the skill two and then you set up, let's say, AoE Death Break from like a Champs Rato or like a Tenebri or something like that. And then, then you had your cleave, your whoever your cleaver was, you can definitely set it up like that. Or you can have somebody else, Stripper, Roman, Harado, you know, whatever. And then you lead into the skill three to reset the cooldowns to give your team more time to do what it needs to do. However, there are pros and cons to that, especially since pretty much every defense you're running up against nowadays has Dizzy in it anyway. So that's always, always, always a risky thing. So again, to err on the side of caution, you're going to always want to make sure, especially if you guys are choosing to trade for Kisei, to ensure that you have some kind of mage on your team with a max Taga Hells or two mages with a Taga Hells each so you can get the soul burn so she can skill two into the skill three. Because I will tell you right now that without that soul burn, Judge Kisei is average at best. Even though she has literally one of the highest multipliers in the game for her skill two, and for those of you guys who are watching me climb arena when it's you know at the end of the week and it's time to, to go for legend like she hits hard but you need a lot to go with that now in terms of her skill one she attacks with the size with 50 percent chance to decrease defense if you guys max this out which is cool and if you guys are wondering if kisei has any plausibility in pve sometimes i use her for hell or hakan and i also use her for a11 Okay, so I use her and Seaside Balloon in my A11 comp, so you got some usability here. And then another thing to keep in mind is that her third skill does reset boss cooldowns. If you guys are in a situation where you need to reset a boss cooldown, you can use this skill 3 to buy your team more time. Now, in terms of gear and stats, it's ultimately going to depend on how you want to build your judge. But regardless of how you build your judge, there's some key things. If you're looking for damage, you're definitely going to, going to want as much attack power as possible, as much crit rate as possible, and as much crit damage as possible. And now, what you guys are seeing here is that I also got some effectiveness here, just mainly because I want to give myself the highest possible chance for that strip on the skill to, to land. Because if the strip doesn't land and I don't strip the buffs, it pretty much negates skill 3. And then it opens up more ways that the enemy could basically conquer my cleave composition. So when you're building judge, whether fast or slow, high damage, low damage, or no damage, these are some of the stats that you're going to be looking at to get here. So even if you're building her as a support, you're still going to want to get the speed plus the effectiveness. If you're building her just pure damage, then as much attack, crit rate, crit damage as possible. If you're running with ox slots, don't worry about the speed. If you're not running with ox slots and you're speed tuning a team, let's say you're running other CR pushers like, you know, Ruzid, Rose, Biken, whoever, then you're going to want to make sure that you speed tune. You'll still get the stats, but you want to make sure that your Judge Kise is speed tuned in a way that's going to allow her to get the burn strip reset and position the rest of your team. 
Judge Kise easily right now is one of the best heroes in the game. You know, in terms of Cleve, especially if you guys are tired tired of doing slow offenses, or if you guys have been sitting on that Oxlots for a long period of time, and you guys have needed a cleaver, and then once they announce the bail and or a mint of nerves or whatever, you're like, yo, I'm getting Judge Kise. But I just want you guys to be cognizant, be super duper aware that Judge Kise does take a little bit of effort and time to be set up. And then another thing too, guys, is if you guys are opting for Judge Kise for damage, she needs Molagora. <laughs> so <laughs> if you guys are prepping to swap for Judge, I need you guys to make sure that you got 48 Molagora ready to go because she needs them. And between her not having Molagora versus her having Molagora, I mean, it's night and day. Like, it's night and day. Like, I've skilled up other heroes, and yeah, you see a pretty, you know, significant difference with those. But with her, because of the percent chances to land and, and especially with the damage increase overall, especially for a primary cleave, you're going to need all of it. So, I'm not trying to turn you guys off <laughs> of selecting Judge Kese by any means because she's amazing. But I also need you guys to understand that if you guys want to see Judge Kise's full potential, she's going to need some pretty sick gear, Molagoras, and attention to detail. Now, in terms of ideal artifacts, there's not really much more that, that I would rather run on Judge other than <laughs> Portrait of the Saviors just for the increased damage. If you guys don't have Portrait, you guys can run Tonfas, um, or you guys can run like a Uberius's Tooth. I mean, although the damage is kind of average. If you guys are going to opt for Uberius, then you guys will probably want a max Uberius. But in terms of hero artifacts, those are the ones that I would recommend. Unless you guys are going to run like a Sigurd Scythe because you guys are running a tankier, more bruiser style Judge Kise. And then I would say that's viable. If you guys are going to be only using her in PvE circumstances, then definitely Daydream Joker. Can't, can't do you wrong at all. But again, Portrait is my top choice for Judge. In terms of gear sets, you can run whatever you want. Here, I ran a double crit immunity. Okay, And the reason why I ran double crit immunity on my Judge is because when I'm cleaving, since you're taking a double turn, sometimes if you burn into the skill 2 and she uses the skill 2 up against a Fallen CC or Araminta or a Dizzy, they'll counter. And if they counter and you don't have that immunity, it could shut your entire cleave comp down. So I run mine on immunity so I can get the stats, so I can get as much crit rate as I can, plus have the immunity so I can successfully cleave, and that's what I'm doing here. But in terms of other sets, it doesn't necessarily have to be double crit. I was just trying to make the best of what I had. You can run her on speed. You can run her on attack set, destro, rage, kind of whatever you want to do. It's just going to boil down to how the gear uh, turns out for you. But again, just a little tip at the end. If you guys are using for cleave, immunity is super duper helpful on AO for her just in case she gets countered. So that way you don't have to worry about your cleave getting shut down before she gets her second turn. So all in all, guys, I just wanted to take a little bit of time and talk to you guys about Arbiter and Judge. So these are two heroes that I know very well. I use them all the time, everywhere. And I wanted to share with you guys some insights. So if you guys are thinking about trading Arbiter, I don't, I can't necessarily say that I would recommend that even though he's losing the attack buff. Now, if you're in a situation where, you know, you're dying and you're relying on that attack buff because maybe your gear isn't that great, understand that as your gear gets better, like, it'll kind of even out. Because Arbiter actually, again, is one of the easiest ML heroes to build, so he can be very beneficial for you no matter where you're at in the game. Versus like Judge Kise, she has a lot more appeal than, than Arbiter, but she is a lot harder to position and a lot harder to build. So either one, though, like I said, is really great to have, especially if you guys are thinking of trading your other heroes for one of these heroes. They're, these are just some of the things that I've run into and experienced along the way. So if you guys are looking at selecting these heroes, you guys can be prepared and you guys know exactly what you're going to get yourself into. So as always, guys, if you guys got any questions, comments, concerns about maybe selecting Arbiter Vildred or selecting Judge Kise, definitely let me know in the comment box below and I'd be happy to assist. Or you could just catch me on a live stream and just ask me directly and I'll be able to answer your question straight up. So as always, it's your boy Damone bringing you guys another video. I love y'all and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.